Hey, it's Matt and Albie here from the Quantum Leap podcast. The strangest thing just happened. Uh, we just finished our Joe Dinicol interview. We were both hit in the face with a nuclear explosion, and suddenly we found ourselves back here. Uh, but this time, we're with Mike Wade, uh, alias Mo Murphy, from the episode Leap Die Repeat. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Mike played Mo, the janitor, who uh, the the character that solved everything, uh, albeit with uh, with some of Ray Lee's help. <laughs> um, so we're really looking forward to talking about your experience on the show. Yeah. Um, but first, could you let us know a little bit about your history? How did you get into acting? Uh, you've got a really impressive resume. Um, oh. We've been looking through your IMDb, and uh, oh. you seem to have been in everything. So thank you. Yeah, let us know a bit about yeah where you started. So I'll give you a little nutshell for me, man. Uh, so I'm, I'm from LA originally. And uh, I've always wanted to act. I just, you know, didn't get the courage to do so until way later. Uh, I studied psychology in college. Got to my senior year. A buddy of mine said, hey, man, let's take these, these two acting classes. It'll be an easy A. And I was like, I don't want to be around actors. Actors are weird, man. <laughs> so, uh, But what I came to learn was actors aren't weird. Uh, I just was someone who didn't express myself, you know, and uh, once I got into the classes, I just fell in love with it. And that childhood dream, you know, came back again because I kind of, not kind of, I pretty much put it out of my mind. I thought I had to be practical and, you know, just do something else. It never really entered my mind that I could actually do this. So, um, yeah, uh, I, one of my uh, instructors said, hey, you should give this a shot. And it was all I needed to hear. So I just slowly but surely started taking my steps to get into the industry. Um, you know, I graduated with my degree in psychology. I didn't know anybody in the business, so just, you know, started making my way. And as I took that first step, new doors started opening up, and, you know, now I'm here talking talking to you guys. That's, um, that's so cool. Yeah. Do, you, do you think the, um, that diversion into psychology helped you in any way preparing for acting, like getting inside people's minds? Yeah, I, I think it, it definitely did. I think that was my, probably my way of coming as close to doing what I really wanted to do because I love people. I love understanding people. And, and through that, I get to understand myself. And um, yeah, so it was, it was like, actually, I feel like it worked pretty, pretty great for me. So yeah, awesome that, that you, know, you could take that, that, that diversion and still find yourself back um, where you dreamed of being as a child, but actually it, it all kind of came together. Yeah. Um, so can you tell, tell me about a couple of your earliest roles then and um, yeah, your, your start on the screen. Oh, man. So my, or on stage. Earliest stuff. Um, see, so I, yeah, I started off doing like, you know, student stuff, indie stuff. I uh, started off actually, you know, doing, uh, you know, background and I... Having to be on set one day with this actor named Bo Kane uh, Woodbine. Uh, and I was, I was background. He was like playing the guitar. And, you know, I just, I don't know if I would do this later, you know, but I didn't know not to do it. So I just so I walked over to him and said, hey, man, um, I'm trying to get started in this business. You know, I, I want to take these classes and things like that. And he said, well, yeah, it's great, man. You know, you take your classes, definitely. But, you know, you want to start working acting, you can actually do that right now. Uh, it was called Backstage West at the time. Uh, now it's just backstage and it's, you know, online. And uh, he said, you yeah, start some in for roles. So I did that. I worked with photographers. Uh, it was a time for print or CD uh, to get headshots and things like that. And just slowly started making my way uh, through things. Uh, so doing indie stuff. Um, Went, you know, to acting school, graduated from a uh, two-year school, studied Meisner. And, yeah, my one of my first, well, actually how I got into the union uh, was was a film called From Above. And just so happened to be starring Danny Glover, uh, Graham Greene, a lot of, you know, veteran actors. And that was, yeah, that's how I got into SAG uh, before the two uh, unions merged. And, yeah intimidating <laughs> working with with big actors like yeah, that so early know, on it's funny uh i remember my manager called me uh joanne she's like oh mike you got the part of and she's so happy and she's going through all the deal points <laughs> and rookie me i said oh you know 
Joanne, um, I don't know if I should hear these things right now because I want to be focused on the role. <laughs> I'm sure she's thinking, who is, who is this? this kid thinks he is, yo. Um, but yeah, I yeah, I was very excited to say the least. Uh, but because of the school that I went to, I really felt prepared to, you know, to to at least come at this. And obviously with great direction, you know, directors get the performance out of you that they need, but uh, I feel like going to a great school that really prepares you uh, to work and to continue to work. Uh, but yeah, it was literally a dream come true. Joined the union through Taft Hartley. Uh, you know, I'm from California, so they flew me to Texas uh, to to uh, to shoot. Uh, taught me a little bit how to ride a horse. Uh, yeah, got to travel a little bit with the film for uh, film festivals. Uh, met yeah, obviously met Danny Glover, Graham Greene. And worked with some great actors and actresses, and um, still friends with the writer uh, of that film, uh, James Bird. Uh, so yeah, it's like literally a dream come true. Uh, yeah, that's a yeah, big way it, to start. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah it was. Uh, you know, you get, like, a, you, get a you can tell your parents you're working with Danny. <laughs> you, we work with him, and it's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. They were pretty excited um, about that. <laughs> I wanted to ask about another role you did uh, that involved uh, NBC and time travel. Oh, right. And um, he, you got to work with uh, Malcolm Barrett yeah. uh, in a really uh, a good episode of uh, Timeless. Yeah. Uh, the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I was just rewatching that. Yeah. And uh, you're really good in that. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Because I'm, I'm really interested in that show as well. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that was my first uh, TV role, really. Um, so, oh yeah, actually, you know, I, I can tell the story about the audition. So this is obviously before COVID. I'm pacing in the hallways, like I kind of typically do. You know, one of my coaches says, "Hey, you should, uh, you know, get, you know, do the lines on your feet, because you know, when you get in that audition room, those nerves can hit you. You know what I mean? So you want to just have it really in you." But I was feeling a little bit nervous, and for. Some reason I was just thinking, okay, well, you know, you, you've worked on this, you rehearsed it, you got this, and uh, in my head is like, you know, you, you do this because you love it, so just go in there and have fun, even though it was a dramatic, you know, uh, role. It was, you know, it was a man who was looking for his family, um, but you know, I still went in there, had fun with it. I think I maybe did one or two takes, and that was my only call for it, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Next thing I know, my agent called me. Hey, you got you got the part. So I was just really happy about that. And the way that that works, so that shot in Vancouver. So they looked at you know actors in Vancouver. Nothing worked out. Uh, so I got to go up there and um, yeah, and 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 play that part. So and I actually ran into some friends out there too. Oh, cool. Yeah. What was the feeling like on that set? Because it was uh, the show was just starting at that time. I think they had a couple seasons all together, but they were just starting out. Yeah, I think that was like the second episode. So um, yeah, it was just it was a lot of fun, man. I you know I you know get to that was my second time in Canada, uh, but yeah, to get to travel, meet this you know this beautiful cast of people who are just so excited about telling these stories, you know, and working with Malcolm was I mean, he's just a hilarious dude. So that was. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I played Nicholas Biddle, who was actually a real person. Mm -hmm. He was the first person. Oh, was yeah, he yeah. based on a real person? Yeah, yeah. Nicholas Biddle wow, was a real, okay. real person. And um, first person to shed blood in the Civil War. It wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't get shot or anything. It was somebody hit him, I think, with a brick or something. And, uh, yeah, it was just an honor to, to play that part, that, you know, historic part, just to bring that to, uh, you know, bring mm -hmm. that to life, so. Uh, being early in, on in your career, were you like reading uh, Civil War history on the way up to filming or anything? Uh, no, <laughs> like no, trying no, to no, prepare no, for the role. Is, uh, you know, looking uh, looking up uh, things at the time, um, a little bit about you know Mr. Biddle, things like that. But yeah, I, I felt like a lot of it was on the page. Um, you know, we're always taught to make things personal, and I just you know, a big part of it is me imagining uh, that I'm. On one hand, it's ecstatic because the war is over and the, the horrors of that are, you know, uh, mm -hmm. are over. 
you're now beginning to experience freedom, but not, but you also have your wife and your children that you're looking for. And so, you know, any human being would, you know, you know, obviously take that very seriously and connect to that. So, um, yeah, I just, yeah, it was, it was just a, a really great, it was a fun part to play, but also, you know, I felt very grounded in, you know, the stakes. Uh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You and Malcolm together and that scene was just so great. Such to have a good scene partner and that scene really made the whole episode, I think, because it, it gets you in that mindset of the stakes of everything that's happening. Yeah. And, and that's in, in that story. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing, too, you know, so which was another fun thing to do is just that when that that turn happens, you know, and he's uh, what was it? He was asking, he was saying something that my character said, well, this doesn't sound right. And then so me that yeah the the wrong regimen or something yeah, yeah and I asked him that question you know mm -hmm. where you know where did you, where did you fight mm -hmm. and he just lit into him because he's pretending to have experienced what mm -hmm. any of these guys have experienced mm -hmm. you know and, and like I said mm -hmm. the horrors of war and things that really nobody should mm -hmm. see um, but yeah so it, it was it was uh, it was a fun role to play because it, you know it had levels to it and then we end up being friends because you know he um, he stepped up in those mm -hmm. labor situations. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so how do you get from that NBC time travel show all the way to this <laughs> NBC time travel show? You had so many roles in between, but like uh, in so many TV shows, different things. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the journey from one to the other. Uh, yeah, you, well, you know, man, the, the, the name of the game is auditioning. And uh, thankfully, I've got a great agent, got a great manager. And um, I'm able to get some really, really great uh, opportunities. And um, somewhere along the line, I was able to switch how I view auditioning, you know, because when we get that email notification, actually, I don't even call them audition, I call them appointments. That's what my, my, uh, or my reps call them. You know, it doesn't say audition, it says appointment this time. You know, now it's tapes, but I just, began to enjoy the process of it, of, of auditioning. Um, one of my coaches said, you know, see this as your opportunity to play the role. You know, like you're not auditioning, you're going in there for however many minutes and you're doing it, have fun with it, that's it, you know. Um, so Jennifer Cooper, you know, I've been in her office a bunch of times before the pandemic and uh, she sent me a few things, um, you know, I've been sent a few things from our office uh, over the years and uh, actually for, for quantum leap, a couple of roles too. Um, so, and this, this is the one. Oh, wow. On. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that's very cool. You got, you got a good episode though. <laughs> so that's, I, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's totally different, um, than any of the other episodes. So I was very happy to be part of this one. So you got the part. Yeah. And uh, how 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 long in between getting the part and being on set and uh, mopping up that soda that's full? Cool, that right? changes uh, timelines. It's crazy. Like, what, what kind <laughs> of messy things. person is going to leave a soda? On the ground? <laughs> <laughs> right? Who would do that? Hey, you know, I think maybe some I, kind of psychopath. I think maybe I did. You know, it was like job security. It's <laughs> clean. They got to need me, so she's got yeah, 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 yeah. Some things got to get knocked over. Um, yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it was. I don't know, maybe about a couple of weeks or so, you know, because, um, okay. you know, you get, you know, you get the part, you get COVID tested. Um, as long as that's all good, then, you know, you go wardrobe fittings and uh, not too much for me, just that, that jumpsuit. Um, yes, yeah, so maybe, maybe a couple of weeks. Um, and uh, I remember it was around Halloween. So, I mean, I don't do too much around that time anyway, but I just kind of just hanging out at home, you know. Did you did you spend a lot of that couple of weeks trying to get your head around the logistics of the script, or are you, are you one of those actors that just goes in and says like, "I'm going to focus on the character, and the the complexity of this is just not important"? No, I, I definitely recognize that this was going to be something complex. Uh, I definitely read the script quite a few times, breaking down different things, you know, which you kind of just naturally do when you have the time for it. Um, and yeah, like I said, when I when I met everyone, I was I really felt like, you know, we're we're in good hands here, uh, there, because yeah, I mean, 
yeah, you have to get this right. Uh, you know, if you you know you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Once I got the part and uh, was able to meet Pamela, the director, and people in the art department, and we're taking photos for the obituaries and all that stuff, I I really got the sense that they had it handled because yeah, you know, you read the script and you see that you're doing the same things over and over and over again. Um, you really got to get it right, or you know, it's not going to you know gel together. So. Does that make it more difficult having to repeat the same thing over and over again, almost exactly like more, more so than just like when you're redoing a scene for a different camera angle or something, but just yeah, knowing it's in a different time loop. Yeah. I don't know. That's a unique situation maybe. Yeah, man. I, I mean, so, I mean, that's, the, it's, that's our job, right? You know, when you're doing film and TV, you're going to do stuff over and over, you know, however many takes the director needs, right? or lighting needs or sound needs. Um, but with this, yeah, <laughs> you really feel like it's Groundhog Day. It's like, yeah, I'm pushing this mop again, <laughs> you know? Uh, but at the same time, I knew once again that we're in capable hands. Um, I knew that we we're doing something really exciting that's gonna come out great. Uh, so that, you know, it, it was, it's kind of just all part of the job. Did it affect your performance at all? That, um, Cause I, I think, it, it, anyone who's watched anything like this before is going to spot the janitor immediately and think, hang on, this is like, this is a whole load of <laughs> high up military people and a journalist. And there's a janitor there who seems to be taking focus. He's going to be key to something. <laughs> Was, did you do anything with that to kind of blend into the background, but also make sure that, Hey, <laughs> I'm going to be an important part of this story. I, well, so I, I was focusing on, as far as an actor, yeah, but my focus was just on how does Mo see life? How does Mo see working here? And you can see, you know, Mo's whistling to elevator music. So I think that he likes his job, you know. And so for me to just focus on that, that helped me not to, uh, you know, I guess give anything away yeah. uh, uh, too, you know, too early. But yeah, uh, that that helped me a lot. This the song, yeah, I actually liked it too. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely helps yeah now we asked joe uh when we spoke to him earlier about um acting knowing that he had done it but what on the other side of it when you're acting when you know you didn't do it but you might want the audience to think that possibly you are one of the people that could have done it is that a different an entirely different acting challenge to to be a little suspicious and yet innocent at the same time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember uh, watching that as well. Um, to to play that, yeah, I, I, I mean, it was once again just, be, you know, being Mo at that time because yeah, you don't want to be in the back with like an eyebrow raise, <laughs> like, is it me or, or, or no? You know, you just kind of you, know, you, you stay in that moment and once again, see the world through, you know, your character's eyes. But yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's a balance. Yeah, you don't want to tip it either way, you know, because like, like they said, either any of us could have done it. Uh, yeah, so. Was Ray working with uh, everyone during this shoot? Because he has to leap into each one of you at a different part of the episode. Was he like trying to like learn from you mannerisms or different things so he could kind of like, be your character as well as you were? Uh, I, I, I think he just, you know, he's, he's just observing us. And uh, I remember he did ask me, uh, you know, what part of the song are you going to be, you know, whistling or and things like mm -hmm. that. So uh, that really let me know that he's into the finer details. And uh, yeah, so I think he, I think he played a pretty good mom. Pretty good me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what was it like, uh, watching your episode on television? Oh uh, man, you know, it's, it's always exciting. It's always exciting. And, um, I always, you know, make sure I stay connected to that feeling, even though I still consider myself to be pretty new, uh, stay connected to that feeling of like, Ooh, I'm on TV right now. It's like, you know, uh, you, cause you could do this so long that you get jaded and it's like, it's just some other thing, but it's like, no, you mean, I mean, Look at what I get to do, you know, and, and thankfully, uh, you know, in these recent years, I've been able to make a living at it, you know. So just 
just being grateful uh, for what I get to do that is going well. Um, yes, it's exciting. Um, when I see myself on TV, uh, it's a little bit different. Some friends have asked me that, like, if it's weird to me. Uh, maybe kind of it is, but it's like I know that it's me, but I don't know. Some, somehow it's, it's, it's different. I don't know, maybe in my mind I think I look different, so maybe that's what helps. Um, so I try mm -hmm. to just, you know, enjoy the, the, the work, but also say, okay, the things that I worked on in rehearsal, did that show up? Am I happy with what I did? So once I get a, another go at it on a different project, uh, see what I can learn. Um, on this set, once again, I'm pretty sure I was, uh, you know, the new guy. Um, I listened to Joe's or watched Joe's uh, interview yesterday. He's, he's been on for 30 years, he said. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? That's yeah, that's crazy. He doesn't look that old. That's wild. Yeah. So I, I have not been doing it that long. So uh, for me, uh, especially recently with the jobs I've been working on, I've been working on with people who've done this for so long. So not only do I get to work with them, I get to observe and see how they do things. You know, it's, it's always some opportunity for me to learn and uh, pick up some new things. Um, Raymond, Caitlin, uh, Heidi, Joseph, um, I mean, everybody. It's Ricardo, it's, it's, they've been doing it so much longer than me, so. What's Robert Picardo really like? Oh man, that guy. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's, he's really cool. He's a really cool guy. Um, he, I don't know, was he telling us funny stories? Uh, I mean, he just got so much experience in this business. Um, and he's such a pro. And you can tell that he's just really comfortable, you know, to, to get to that level. It's, it, it you know, who came comes to mind for me is I, I work with an actor named Ben Daniels. And so Ben is another hilarious person. He'll have you dying laughing before the camera rolls and when they all right and so now you're trying not to laugh and he's like he's just there and he's he, you know you do things so long you're just great at it you know so that was the uh, same way with working with him and yeah, that's what that makes me think I, I just wanted to make the observation you said a couple of times like you were the the, the new kid on mm -hmm. set and, and things like that but from everything you said you strike me as the kind of person that well you could be in this business for another 20 30 years and you will still be saying i'm observing this person i'm i'm watching this person i'm learning you you seem like one of those people that's focused on constantly evolving is that is that fair yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely um i think there's always room to grow you yeah, know you know there's always gonna be room to grow so uh once you think you've got it and, you, and that's you know that's when you know, your work isn't maybe going to be authentic or full of life, you know. You want to know that there's always something to learn. Uh, you know, if you get another shot at it a couple of years later, yeah, maybe you could have did it better. And, you know, that's not a bad thing. I think that's actually a beautiful thing, you know. And one of my, uh, like, I think in one of my, like, a bio, uh, I said that, you know, my aim is to perfect my craft. There is no such thing as perfect, but it's something for me to chase. And it's something that's gonna make sure that I never just kind of rest on my laurels, like, oh yeah, I did this. Nah, keep in pursuit of it. To me, it's it's it, it, it keeps it alive, exciting, it's fun. And also it kind of takes some pressure off because yeah, you're never gonna be perfect, but you're also still going after it. Um, with 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 joy and love uh, yeah so what was your feeling on this episode like uh the direction and the production team on how to uh, how how the block shooting went and uh was that like stressful or fun or a little bit of both because of just the repetitive nature of the whole thing yeah well I mean, once again I, I i really felt that we were in uh, great hands but i also saw that they were making sure everything was right, you know, um, just with themselves and even even us, you know, continuity, you know, obviously it's, it's important. And uh, it was just, yeah, it was really important for us to know when we did things, you know. I picked up the can and then I did what? You know, so uh, because if it's off anywhere, 
that kind of could throw the whole thing off, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I would say it was too much stress, but they were definitely focused on it. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And did you get to keep your uh, name badge? Oh, uh, man. I should have asked for it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think. Apparently so. Yeah. <laughs> No, they just gave you the mop, right? Yeah, they said no, you can take the mop over. The mop over. Uh, <laughs> so the can. That, that loud bucket. That bucket caused us some, yeah. some stuff, man. Was it loud? Yeah, I mean, because yes, it's a metal mm-hmm. bucket and you're going out of the hallway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always tip my hat to the crew because I'm, I, yeah, I'm always amazed at how they're able to put these fires out. Like, oh, this thing broke or this happened. This, you know they find ways to fix things. And uh, this is another uh, fantastic crew that I, that I work with on this. Yeah. Even though they didn't give me my the, the name, the name badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks. There's some, um, so many cool memories from the show. Thank you for sharing them with us. Um, can you tell us anything you've got in the pipeline, anything coming up that the, the leapers can look out for you in? Uh, well, yeah. So um, lately I've been uh, recurring on a show called Seal Team. Uh, which was literally another dream of mine to, to be on the show uh, and, and to be in this type of role. So, uh, you know, we've been recurring for a few seasons. They just got renewed for season seven. Um, uh, it, you know, uh, I'll work with them as long as they'll have me. So, uh, you know, you guys can check out um, the previous episodes on Paramount Plus, and uh, hopefully you'll be seeing uh, Lieutenant Soto in season seven. Mike, thank you again for your time. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you having me here.